TPN, the Sovereign Americans News Network. Now, in recent weeks, many of us have grown even more uneasy about our administration's approach to national security. The most important role ascribed to our federal government, let me say too, it's not politicizing our security to discuss our concerns because Americans deserve to know the truth about the threats that we face and what the administration is or isn't doing about them. So let's talk about them. New terms used like overseas contingency operation instead of the word war, that reflects a worldview that is out of touch with the enemy that we face. We can't spin our way out of this threat. It's one thing to call a pay raise a job created or saved. It's quite another to call the devastation that a homicide bomber can inflict a man-made disaster. And I just say, come on, Washington, if nowhere else, national security, that's one place where you got to call it like it is. And in that spirit, in that spirit, we should acknowledge that on Christmas Day, the system did not work. Abdul Mutallab passed through airport security with a bomb, and he boarded a flight, hell-bent on killing innocent passengers. This terrorist trained in Yemen with Al-Qaeda. His American visa was not revoked until after he tried to kill hundreds of passengers. On Christmas Day, the only thing that stopped this terrorist Blind luck and brave passengers. Really, it was a Christmas miracle, and that is not the way that the system is supposed to work. <laughs> what followed was equally disturbing after he was captured. He was questioned for only 50 minutes. We had a choice in how to do this. The choice was only question him for 50 minutes and then read his Miranda rights. The administration says then there are no downsides or upsides to treating terrorists like civilian criminal defendants. But a lot of us would beg to differ. For example, there are questions we would have liked this foreign terrorist to answer before he lawyered up and invoked our U.S. constitutional right to remain silent. U.S. constitutional rights. Our rights that you, sir, fought and were willing to die for to protect in our Constitution. The rights that my son as an infantryman in the United States Army is willing to die for. The protections provided, thanks to you, sir, we're going to bestow them on a terrorist who hates our Constitution and tries to destroy our Constitution and our country. This makes no sense because we have a choice in how we're going to deal with the terrorists. We don't have to go down that road. There are questions that we would have liked answered before he lawyered up. Like, where exactly were you trained and by whom? You're bragging about all these other terrorists just like you. Uh, who are they? When and where will they try to strike next? The events surrounding the Christmas Day plot reflect the kind of thinking that led to September 11th. That the, the, the threat then, as the USS Cole was attacked, our embassies were attacked, it was treated like an international crime spree, not like an act of war. We're seeing that mindset again settle into Washington. That scares me for my children, for your children. Treating this like a mere law enforcement matter places our country at grave risk because that's not how radical Islamic extremists are looking at this. They know we're at war and to win that war we need a commander-in-chief, not a professor of law standing at the lectern. It's that same kind 
of misguided thinking that is seen throughout the administration's foreign policy decisions. Our president spent a year reaching out to hostile regimes writing personal letters to dangerous dictators and apologizing for America. And what do we have to show for that? Here's what we have to show. North Korea tested nuclear weapons and longer range ballistic missiles. Israel, a friend and a critical ally, now question the strength of our supports. Plans for a missile defense system in Europe, they've been scrapped. Relations with China and Russia are no better. And relations with Japan, that key Asian ally, they're in the worst shape in years. And around the world, people who are seeking freedom from oppressive regimes wonder if Alaska is still that beacon of hope for their cause. The administration cut support for democracy programs. And where the president has not been clear, I ask, where is his clear and where is his strong voice of support for the Iranians who are risking all in their opposition to Ahmadinejad? <laughs> Just that short list. That short list. And you know, it's no wonder that our president only spent about 9% of his State of the Union address discussing national security, foreign policy, because there aren't a whole lot of victories that he could talk about that night. And, that's just a short list. There are so many challenges in front of us, and it can seem overwhelming. But despite these challenges, we have hope that we can move things in the right direction, but it's going to require the administration to change course. We need a foreign policy that distinguishes America's friends from her enemies and recognizes the true nature of the threats that we face. strong national defense. I think you would agree with me, as, as Reagan used to talk about that peace through strength. And in that respect, I applaud the president for following at least a part of the recommendations made by our commanders on the ground to send in some more reinforcements to Afghanistan. Now, though, he, we, must spend less time courting our adversaries, spending more time working with our allies. And we must build effective coalitions capable of confronting dangerous regimes like Iran and North Korea. It's time for more than just tough talk. Oh, just like you, probably just so tired of hearing the talk, talk, talk. <laughs> tired of hearing the talk. It's time for some tough actions like sanctions on Iran and in places in the world where people are struggling and oppressed and they're fighting for freedom, America must stand with them. We need a clear foreign policy that stands with the people and for democracy, one that reflects both our values and our interests, and it is in our best interests. Because democracies, they don't go to war with each other. They can settle their differences peacefully. The lesson of the last year is this. Foreign policy can't be managed through the politics of personality. And our president would do well to take note of an observation John F. Kennedy had made once he was in office, that all of the world's problems aren't his predecessor's fault. TPN, the Sovereign Americans News Network.